Hi, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Come on in. Hi, everybody. Welcome, welcome. It's great to see all of you here. We got a couple more people joining in here. That's great. It's great to see all of you. We're going to take, we're going to start in about a minute as everybody's coming in. I'm Dr. Arnaud Prévost, and I am going to lead this workshop today. It's all about business planning. That's going to be great. It's great to see all of you here. Welcome, welcome. Hello there, Don. <laughs> we have some familiar names, some new names, and uh, it is great to see everybody here. It's all about business planning today, and uh, we're going to do this. We're going to do this. Hopefully, by the end of our um, by the end of our time together, we're going to be able to um, have a wonderful understanding of the business planning process and really get ready to make that business plan. So that's gonna be great. Just uh, letting everybody know uh, that, um, again, my name is Dr. Arnaud Prévost and I'm program coordinator here at uh, the SBDC at BMCC. Uh, I'm here in Pendleton. And just about 30 seconds before I got on, one of my lights turned off and broke. So if you only see me lit from one side, that's, that's why. So there you go. All right, let's begin. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Feel free to leave any questions that you have uh, in the chat so that we can get a running tally. We have a number of advisors here on our uh, chat answering any questions. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the chat uh, periodically as we talk about business planning. So let's go ahead and do this. It's the top of the hour. Once again, uh, we are the SBDC at BMCC, and um, we uh, help you in any way, at any level of the business development process, from business ideation all the way to growing your business and everything in between. The best way to get in contact with us is just to give us a call, 541-278-5833, 541-278-5833. We are in Umatilla, Wallawa, Baker County. Anywhere you are in Eastern Oregon, that's great. That's great. All right. Uh, and uh, again, you can also leave us an email, sbdc at bluecc.edu, or again, our phone number, 541-278-5833. Yes. Well, let's do this. All right. Here we go. So a couple of rules, uh, and this is pretty standard, uh, standard stuff. Uh, it's always good etiquette to mute yourself when you're not talking. So let's go ahead and check that right now. Make sure that we're muted so that I don't hear some background noise. Every now and then I'll hear some background noise. It's sort of, uh, it can be a little distracting, but that's okay. Um, also, if you're using your phone, please mute yourself using the phone's uh, a dedicated mute button. Uh, also, don't forget to leave those questions. I mean, really, it's meant to be interactive. Uh, leave those questions. and. Um, that's how that's how I know where really where to start tweaking and taking our conversation today. So that's important. All right. Um, also, uh, like I said, type in the chat or you can use the reaction buttons. You could raise your hands. You can give me a thumbs up. It's all good. It's all ready to go. We got a number of other people coming in. So that's amazing. It's great to see a lot of you. There you go. Um, and so let's let's do this. Let's get started. Our plan for today is fairly straightforward, fairly straightforward. We are going to take a look at the important sections of a business plan. We're going to start drafting a, a sample business plan. I'm going to give you a template. There's going to be a lot of examples, a number of articles that we're going to read that I'm going to share with you. So sit back, relax, watch, get some coffee, and let's begin. So very first question, that we always should ask ourselves is, why do we need a business plan? Why do we need a business plan? That's a very important question. Why can't I just go ahead and start my business without a business plan? Well, our friends at the SBA have our first article that we're going to take a look at. And here it is. I'm going to go ahead and share the link with you in the, in the uh, chat in just a second. 
right over here. It's great to see everybody saying good morning. Thank you. Good morning to everybody. But the question that we have here is, why do we need a business plan? Here's our link right over here. Remember to mute, uh, mute yourselves. I'm hearing a little like a dog barking or something like that. That's okay. That's all right. Make sure to mute yourselves. Go ahead, everybody, and take 10 seconds and click on that article link in the chat. Go ahead. Make sure to save it or print it out. And we're going to walk through this answering the five reasons you need a business plan. Why do we need it? Why do we need to spend the time today to really learn how to do it? Well, the very first thing that we need to know is that a business plan is uh, useful because, number one, it will help you steer your business as you start and grow. Think of a business plan as a GPS to get your business going, right? It's a GPS. A good business plan, a good business plan will guide you through each stage of start, starting and managing your business, right? You'll use your business plan like a GPS for how to structure, run, and grow your business, all right? It's a way to think through the details of all the key elements of how your business will run. It takes a lot of stress off of your mind and puts it on a document so that you have that GPS so that you know how to go ahead and run that business and grow your business. As you draft your plan, and we'll see this little by little today, as you draft your plan, you will see some surprises. Oh, okay, I've done that market research. It was great that I had to do that market research for the plan because now I know a lot more about my market. And now I know a lot more about how to grow and where to steer my business. It's always good to have a refreshed, up-to-date business plan. Every one year, three years, I, I, I wouldn't go as far as to say five years, but really have it going and setting goals for those for that one year, three years, or five years, and so on. Number two, I'm reading uh, right from the article, and so feel free to keep a copy of that article for you. Oh, we have more people coming in. That's great. Number two, it's really not as hard as you think. A lot of people can feel like that, that it's a daunting task. It really isn't, all right? A business plan is, is a written tool about your business that projects three to five years ahead and outlines uh, your business uh, path for your business that it intends to take, all right, that your business intends to take to make money and grow revenue. Think of it as a living project for your business. And it is. It is not, uh, you know, Everybody remember Ron Popeil on the TV, said it and forget it, he used to say. That's not what a business plan is about. You don't set it and forget it. It's a living document. And you want to make sure that you keep it up to date. So it'll help you project three to five years up in the future. Right there. Very good. Now, uh, it is not a one-time document. You break it down into many plans. Right, One for sales and marketing, one for pricing, one for operations, and so on. Those are the different sections we'll talk about today. So that's important. That's important to look. Also, it can help you reach your business milestones. And this is, this is important too, right? All right? A well-thought-out plan helps you step back and think objectively about the key elements of your business. It takes away a lot of the emotion. You are making this plan. It is an objective business plan. Your excitement is funneled through that plan so that it can, uh, your excitement for your business can be funneled through that plan so that you can act upon that plan, all right? And that's important. It also informs your decision-making as you move forward. It is essential whether you need to secure a business loan or not. And we'll talk about this in the next section, all right? Keep in mind, and this is important, that the plan does not uh, have to be like an encyclopedia, and it does not have to have all the answers. Again, it's a living document. You might be, again, it's a living document. You might be uh, seeing, and we're going to see plans with different sections today. Some plans are smaller than others. The template that I'm going to give you is... Um, uh, a big one, it has 45 pages in it, and that'll be pretty thorough. But again, 
It is not a set it and forget it type of thing. It is a living document. It could help you reach those business milestones. Number four, it can help get you, I'm sorry, where was I? Oops, I just lost track of my cursor. There you go. It can help get you funding. Very important. All right. It's one thing to talk about your business plan, uh, your business. It's another thing to have the, the goods, the proof, the business plan itself in your hand. Business plans can help you get funding or bring on new business partners. Having one in place can help investors feel confident that they'll see a return on their investments. Same thing with banks. You go for a loan, one of the very first questions they ask you, go ahead and show us your business plan so that we can look over it and see how you intend to be profitable within one, three, five years, and so on. Very important. Your business plan is the tool that you'll use to persuade others that working for you or investing in your business is a smart decision, is a smart decision. Does that make sense, everybody? All right. Uh, next step, number five, let's do this. And this is important. There's no wrong way to write a business plan, says the SBA. And that is true. OK, there's no wrong way. There are sections that we're, I'm going to recommend and subsections that you can go ahead and grow and we'll see it in our template. All right. But again, there's no right, right or wrong way to do it. You can um, you can uh, pick a plan format that works best for you. Again, I'll have my recommendations. And what's important in your business plan is that it meets your needs. Most business plans fall into one of two categories generally, the traditional business plan or the startup, the lean startup. And again, with the startup, you'll have more points about initial funding and uh, investment capital and things, things of that nature. But we're focusing on our traditional business planning right here. So my friends, this is it. The five reasons why you need a business plan, why you need one. Go ahead and make sure to save that article for you, just take a, take a second, really save it. Again, it's in the chat. The link is in the chat, all right? Uh, and um, we're gonna go and continue on to our PowerPoint presentation, uh, and that's great. So again, go ahead and click on the link in the chat and you'll have that article right there with you, okay? Very good. So what are the main sections? Well, the very first section you'll have in your business plan and again, this is a broad section, is your executive summary, executive summary. When people take a 40, 50, 60 page business plan, thoroughly written, what's the first thing they read? The executive summary. It explains why your business will be successful, right? It includes your mission statement. What is the mission in of your business? And we'll talk about mission statements in just a second. What's the purpose of your business other than to make money, right? What are you trying to provide for the population as a whole, for the community as a whole? What's the purpose of your organization, right? It will have information about your products and services, broadly speaking. You're not going to go too deep into that in the executive summary and any basic information about your company's leadership team, employees, and location. Don't hesitate to include also some financial information in your executive summary. Some executive summaries even have a graph that shows, again, broad, very high level, broad information about your financials and a high level growth plan Okay, if you plan to ask for financing, if you ask for financing from a lender at a bank or anything like that, then you are going to go ahead and explain in that executive summary, very high level, very broadly speaking, what you were asking for and your plan for growth, essentially. Now, how many of you figured out that this is sort of a mini business plan in one section. Did you all see that? That's a mini business plan in one section, which is why it's recommended, obviously, that it be placed at the beginning. You're giving a summary, sort of an abstract of your business plan, but that it be written at the end. 
How do you know about your marketing strategies and your financials that you're going to include in your executive summary? How do you know until you've actually written out those sub those sections later on? So again, a little tip, write it last at the very end, but place it first. That's your executive summary, executive summary. All right, so far so good. Okay, that's section one. Yes, let's do this. Here we go. A little bit more. I, I did forget to click on that. I apologize. Briefly tell your reader what your company is and why it will be successful. So that's an introduction to your business. All right. I promised uh, some information about mission statements. One of the best ways to go ahead and learn about mission statements, a statement that focuses on the mission of your business above and beyond making money, one of the best ways to do this is to go ahead and look at examples. So let's do this. Let's go ahead and take a look at examples. There's a wonderful blog post, uh, and it is right here. Not here. It is right here. I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to share it in the chat, and we're going to take a look at this all together. Okay. Again, make sure that if you have any questions, please make sure to put them in the chat. So it's all here. Take a second to go ahead and click on uh, this article right over here. And it just gives you standard mission statements from some of the biggest companies, essentially. Again, I'm a big believer in taking examples. You know, you don't need to reinvent the wheel, um, but you're going to have to write your own mission statement, obviously, and your own. But you don't have to learn from it from square one. You can learn from it uh, by using examples. So let's take a look. These are mission statements. Uh, let's take a look at Etsy right over here. Does everybody see that? Etsy right over here, right over here. So this is the mission statement. Here we go. To reimagine commerce in ways that builds a more fulfilling and lasting world. We are building a human, authentic and community centric global and local marketplace. Now, does that summarize the activities of Etsy as a company? That's the idea. That's the idea. Does it talk about their purpose? Yes, it does. And everything, and this is important from a mission statement point of view, everything has to relate back to the mission. What you do not want, and this is a, this is a warning to all uh, small business owners, is mission drift, especially when you're a small business. You want to stay focused on your mission. Yes, it's to make money, absolutely. But number two, that mission statement. What is it? Let's take a look at more examples, all right, of uh, some companies that we might all be familiar with. I'm going to go ahead and scroll down just a little bit to LinkedIn. LinkedIn. I have a LinkedIn profile. I'm sure a number of you have LinkedIn profiles as well. To connect the world's professionals, to make them more productive and successful. And again, all their activities, everything points back to that mission statement. Is there something they're doing that does not point back to that mission statement? That could be an example of mission drift. And we have to be careful about that as well. You don't want to spread yourself too thin and so on. Okay. Mission statements can change and they have, but it's usually a big deal when they change. Microsoft used to have a mission statement talking about getting a computer in every home. And then later on in the 2000s, they changed their mission statement, talking about more integrated uh, technological developments and so on and so forth. So they changed their mission statement. Company shifted focus, but again, you put that in your um, you put that in your um, uh, executive summary. All right, let's try another one here. The BBC, right here, and this will be our last one that we take a look at here for a mission statement the BBC, to enrich people's lives with programs. I like the British spelling of programs, with programs and services that inform, educate, and entertain. Now, again, people have their opinions about uh, media. In this case, we're talking about media and all of that, but this is their mission statement. And they look to make sure that each activity points back to that mission statement. Each activity meaning financial, marketing, product offering, and so on and so forth. So feel free, 
feel free to go ahead and take a look at more of these in that article, in that blog post. All right, everybody, so far so good? Okay, so the executive summary is first, comes first. Let's do this. <clears throat> Let's move on. Next, are we ready? We're talking about number two, company description. Company description. You're going to go into greater detail in number two. And again, there's no right or wrong way to do a business plan, but this is my recommendation. Company description. Go into detail about how uh, about the problems that your business will solve. And that's important because fundamentally you're solving an issue, a problem somewhere in the community, somewhere on the internet, somewhere. There's not enough of art creation, for example, in the local community. Boom, you have an art production company. There's not enough, um, there's not enough retail for clothing, clothing retail. Boom, your company has clothing retail. And that's the problem you solve. Okay. Very important. Very important. And again, we'll take a look at a, a slew of examples, and it's going to be great. It's going to be great. Let's do this. Number two, list out the consumers, organizations, and the businesses that your company plans to serve. All right. Are you a B2B company? Maybe a B2G, providing for to government, B2 for business to consumer. All right. Be specific. We plan to serve this population, the, the general population. Coffee lovers, if you're starting a, um, a coffee shop or something along those lines, all right? Again, you might want to explain, uh, I'm sorry, you might want to continue on with subsections here, all right? And again, it'll be up to you. We're, we'll take a look at examples. But you can explain your competitive advantage that will make your business a success, all right? Not only am I a bookstore, but I'm a mobile bookstore that will show up at farmer's markets. That's an example, right? That's my competitive advantage so that I can get the farmer's market crowd as they're shopping. They can look for new books in my little mobile book shop van or something like that, okay? Explain why your business will be a success, the competitive advantage. Next, in this section, consider uh, putting in if there are any experts on your team, experts on your team. Maybe you are the expert. Maybe you have 20 plus years experience in um, painting watercolors, for example, and you're going to sell local landscape watercolors in your shop, right? Maybe you found the perfect location for your store, right? Maybe there's a perfect location for your, uh, your shop um, and so on and so forth, all right? This, the company description is the place to boast about your company's strengths, right? So far, so good, everybody? Thumbs up? Yes, let's do it. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. All right, uh, let's do it. Next up, we're going to talk about, and again, these are broad titles, the general category titles, okay? Okay, all right, we talked about this. Next up, Consider putting in number three, products and services, all right? Some sections will have this at number four, number five, but generally I like to put it earlier, right after the company description. Remember they're diving in, readers are diving into your business plan, executive summary, then who you are, then what you offer. This is the part of your business plan where you will describe the specific products and services that you're going to offer, okay? And that's that's very important, okay? Very important. Um, you don't necessarily, if you are opening a restaurant, for example, you don't necessarily have to include the whole menu here, but the general category, right? You wanna be as specific as you can. It can be a long section. You can put in um, general information as well, and then link back, for example, to a copy of your menu, if you're starting a restaurant, in the appendix. And we'll talk about the appendix as well. 
You'll fully explain the concept for your business, right? What's the concept? Is it a high concept business? Is it more local? What, what's it about? Okay. What are the products and services about? Am I talking about affordable, affordability? Am I talking about more high-end for the high-end market? All right. This is where you would discuss this as well. Along with all aspects, in this case, of purchasing, manufacturing, packaging, and even distribution. Distribution. Are you the service provider? Do you have a distribution channel? This is where you can talk about this. Okay. You'll also go over some suppliers, all right, suppliers, cost, and how what you're offering fits into the current market and stacks up against your competitors. Okay. So it's a little bit of the marketing here, but not so much. Marketing is our next section. But again, you'll go over the suppliers and the cost. All right. You want the people to get a deeper and greater understanding of what your business is and offers slowly as they're reading through all of the uh, products and services. We'll see in some examples, some people have put lists, lists. These are my products and offerings. Boom, boom, boom. I offer art classes for $55 an hour. I offer this and that. So that's another way to go ahead and, and do this. And we'll look at examples. But again, we're talking about the broad categories here. Here we go. Let's do this. Next section. Oh, I forgot. Sorry, before we get to the next section. Explain how it benefits your customers and what your product life cycle looks like. Let's talk about that. What's your product life cycle, right? A product life cycle starts off with the product being new and offering. As you reach more saturation in the market, as you reach more saturation, more people will have used it. And then it starts to decline. The classic example of the product life cycle is the iPhone, the iPhone. It started off very new 15 years ago. Only uh, only early adopters had it, right? And then more and more people had it, and then it reached saturation, and now it might be declining a little bit because everybody has one. And so that's the idea. Share your plans for any intellectual property, like copyright or patent filings in this section as well, all right? Do you have any uh, intellectual property considerations or patent filings that you need to do? This is where you would do it. All right. If you're doing research and development for a service or a product, then you explain it in detail as well. So it depends. It all depends on where you're at. Uh, and so there you go. Next. Next section. Market analysis. All right. Great. So you're going to analyze in this section the market. You need to be able to describe in this section a good understanding, show that you have a good understanding of the market for your product, all right? Competitive research will show what other businesses are doing and what their strengths are. This is a good opportunity right here to input, and we'll take a look at it in the examples, but I'll write it up here anyway. The SWOT analysis. The SWOT analysis, I wrote it on the screen here, SWOT analysis right over here. Um, this is a good place to put it. Strengths of your business, the S, weaknesses of your business, weaknesses of your current situation, opportunities of the market, and threats from the market. Let's talk about this. Strengths. I can bring books to places that cannot reach, uh, that other bookstores cannot reach because of my mobile bookshop. I drive my little van and there you go. Weaknesses, the price of gas has gone up so much that it's biting into my uh, bottom line. Opportunities, the number of readers of books has gone up in my, in my community and they're desperate for more opportunities to read and threats. The other bookshop that's my main competitor has brand new books and I only have used books. Does that make sense to everybody? S-W-O-T, a SWOT analysis. That is a great example of competitive research, 
all right? Competitive research. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to go into other competitors' shops. Enter in there. See what their atmosphere is. See what their product offering is. Guess what? They're going to do the same for you, right? They're going to do the same for you. If you offer classes, if I would say if they offer classes, and that is your main revenue stream, consider signing up for one of them before you start so that you get a feel for what the other competitors are offering, right? And so on and so forth. So that uh, the competitors are offering. So that's very, very key and very important. All right. Next, in your market research, this is where you'll look for trends. This is where you'll look for themes. What are the trends that you see? Are there, is there an increasing number of people asking for your art classes? Maybe more readers for your bookshop? Maybe um, you're finding that a lot younger people are coming into your restaurant, right? Than you were expecting. Look for these trends. This is where you will find it, okay? And as always, number three, do I say what do successful competitors do? What are they doing? Is it the ambiance? Do you have energetic staff? Do, I'm sorry, do they have energetic staff serving the customers? Right? Maybe that's what they're doing well. Maybe that's what works. But if you find something, an issue with your competitors, can you do it better? All right. Now's the time to answer these questions. Okay. Does that make sense to everybody? You got it? Okay. Yes, yes, very good. Now, um, we're going to dive into this section a little bit deeper later on. I want to make sure that we talk about the market analysis and how we actually do this. This section may be one of your largest one in your business plan, one of the largest one. So that's key. That's key. All right, let's keep going. I see one comment in the chat. Let's see. Very good. Christy says, uh, don't forget indirect competition. I forgot about that one. Thank you, Christy. This is what, see, this is why we're a team. This is why we're a team. We're working together, the advisors, the program coordinator. Let's do this. So um, consider substitutions, right? Christy says it best right here, like watching videos instead of reading books. Okay. Consider substitutions, right? What is a substitute for your product or service? Okay. If you open a soda shop, for example, a substitution can be wine at the local wine bar or something like that, right? Don't just look at direct competitors, but look at indirect competition as well. And so there you go. Okay. All right. Are you ready? Let's go on. All right. Remember, Overall, I don't know why I have that last one popping up at the top, but that's all right. You'll need a good understanding of the industry outlook and the target market. And that's what we've been talking about in this section here. Okay, there you go. Next, organization and management. I put this into section five because it's important that you sort of get it out of the way uh, first. Very important. This is, or, or not first, but earlier on. Okay. Um, this is where you describe the legal structure of your business, right? State whether you have or intend to incorporate your business as a C or an S corporation, form a general limited partnerships, although we tend to um, say that partnerships are not necessarily the best, but it is a possibility, or if you're a sole proprietor or if you're an LLC. This is where you mention this. You can also include an organizational chart to lay out who's in charge of what at your company. Starting your business as the, the boss with three employees, two employees or something like that. Who's in charge and so on. This section does not have to be long, but it needs to be included. This is important. Also, make sure that you include, and this is key, um, include how each person's unique experience and talents will contribute to the success of your venture, okay? Consider including resumes, okay, and CVs of key members of your team. One strategy here is to have a bullet point resume, and then in the appendix, have the CVs of your team, 
Does that make sense, everybody? You all understand? You see what I mean? So again, three members of my team, let's say, here I am, five bullet points explaining my experience and expertise. My second uh, team member, five bullet points explaining their experience and expertise. Third, third person, five more bullet points and so on, mentioning that all of the CVs are in the appendix at the end, okay? So there you go. All right, so far so good. So this is, um, again, you can use an organizational chart. If you're unfamiliar with organizational charts, um, they are a visual representation of who's in charge. So the boss will be at the top generally and uh, employees a little bit lower, lower and then connected. Uh, go ahead and feel free to Google organizational chart examples and it'll show you that. Um, all right, there you go. Okay. And you tell your reader how your company will be structured and how it will run, essentially, the structure of your company, okay? Are you a sole proprietor? Do you have? Are you the only one? Do you have uh, many hats that you're wearing? This is where you would uh, explain that as well. Uh, there you go. Uh, Joe had a great question. Maybe I missed it, but what's a CV? A CV is a curriculum vitae. It is your resume, but full, full version of your CV, of your resume, full version. It has everything that you've done. Whereas a resume is more of a shortened version of a CV, the CV will have will be generally, you put it in the back, in the appendix. So I hope that answers your question. Thank you, uh, Joe. Thank you. All right. Very good. Let's do this. Let's go on. Next up comes marketing and sales. And this is how you will describe this section, very important, is related to the other marketing section, but this is mostly marketing and sales together, together. Um, it will describe how you will attract and retain your customers. Are you advertising on social media? Are you advertising in your local paper? right? Are you uh, paying for uh, boosts on Facebook? Are you paying for a radio ad? Also, how will you retain your customers? Are there surveys that you go ahead and give them? Let's say um, you produce artwork, you make watercolors, put it in a lovely box right there that'll have your logo on it. And inside you might slip a half sheet that has a survey. That they can, where they can get 20% off their next artwork purchase um, if uh, they return the survey or something like that. So this is where you'll also describe how a sale actually happens, will actually happen, okay? How a sale actually happens. Are you du selling directly? Are you not selling directly? Is it indirect? Are we doing affiliates? How does that work? And so on, okay? All right. Thank you, Jeff. Jeff has a, um, a reply here um, for the questions with regards to what a CV is, all right? And it really is an itemized uh, list of a person's entire professional and academic life. So notable projects, honors, achievements, that sort of thing, all right? It sums up your entire career. That's that's the idea of a, of a CV, all right? Cool, absolutely. So this is the sales section, all right? People will want to know. All right. Very important. As an example, as an example, um, I worked as an independent contractor, as a consultant for private schools. And this section in this section, I went ahead and put in that I advertised through LinkedIn, LinkedIn posts and articles that I read that I write. So prospective customers can read. And at the bottom, I would have an ad for my services of the articles. It was all free for me, took a lot of time, obviously, it's either going to take time or money, right? But there you go, all right? You refer to this section later when you make your financial projections, right? So make sure that to just thoroughly describe your complete marketing and sales strategies. It also is possible to take this section and make it into its own plan later on, the marketing plan, right? So that's, that's an idea, 
that'll be populated and it'll have more things. So uh, also remember, this is key. There's no single way to approach a marketing strategy. A lot of marketing gurus over the last 50, 60 years have been telling you, oh, this is it. This is it. No, this is it. <laughs> this is it. There's no one way to go ahead and do this. Your strategy actually should evolve and change to fit your unique needs. All right. And that's key. That's important. Okay. So far, so good. All right. So market research, marketing, and sales. All right. Some people have put marketing and sales and research in the same section. Remember, that's all right. There's no one way to do a plan, but it needs to be there. It needs to be there. Remember, people are diving into your business plan. They've looked at the different sections. They know who you are. Now they're looking to see how you're going to be profitable and how you're going to make a sale. And so make sure to describe it. Okay. Very important. All right, everybody. Okay. Next. This is a section that you can include. You don't necessarily have to. Okay. All right. But this is the funding request section. All right. You can put this at the end. You, I put it at number seven because this is a it's a place to put it. It makes sense. All right. Specify whether you want debt or equity if you're making a funding request, the terms you'd like applied, and the length of time your request will cover. This will be important uh, if you're requesting um, finan financial help from a bank. All right. Financial uh, loans, essentially a loan from a bank, go to your bank and so on. You're going to get give a detailed descriptions, a description about how you'll use these funds. You'd, like I said that you didn't necessarily need this section in a living document and business plan because you might already have the funds and might not need them. And you might be looking to structure your business thanks to your business plan. And this funding is just maybe doesn't apply to you. Again, it has to meet your unique needs and so on. But in this section, if you do choose to include it, you have to give a detailed explanation about how you'll use the funds. I would recommend giving a detailed explanation down to the cent, down to the cent, right? Very important. Once again, in my field, I've gone ahead and done numerous uh, funding requests for schools. I, my field is in private education for private schools. And uh, we've done grant writings and things like that. If you've ever done grant writing, this should be fairly familiar to you, funding requests. You have to outline exactly how you'll use the funds that you're requesting. And that's important, okay? Also, make sure that you specify if you need the funds to buy equipment or materials, pay salaries, cover um, the specific bills until revenue increases, okay, and so on. For for-profit companies, this is important, all right? You'll mention this, okay? Um, so again, I want to be very clear, crystal clear. I did mention grant writing. This is not a grant writing workshop. I was just giving an example of how I personally had done a funding request. So just wanted to be very crystal clear about that. Okay. We're talking about business plans. <laughs> this is a business plan. So there you go. For your startups, this is what you'll do and so on. Okay. Always include a description of your future strategic plans in this case. All right. Remember, if they're parting with their money, if a bank is giving you a loan, for example, you will want to reassure them that this is going to be uh, for future focused plans and growth focused plans. Okay. All right. So always include a description of your future strategic plans, like paying off debt. And even, and this is at the end of your business uh, life cycle for your whole business, selling off your business. Maybe you're done. Maybe this is the final business plan you're making. And in three years, you're retiring and you're selling off your business. Maybe you need some uh, financial injection inside your company, but you go to a bank or another organization and whatnot. So again, funding requests, funding requests. So far, so good. Now, again, remember, I'll say it again and again, not every business plan will have uh, all of these sections. This is my recommendation. Okay. My recommendation. And there you go. If you're asking for funding, this is where you outline your funding requirements. All right? Your goal is to clearly explain how much funding you'll need over the next five years, let's say, and how you'll use it. 
Okay. I don't want to repeat and repeat, but that's, that's the idea. Okay, you want to make sure that people are comfortable as they're reading your business plan about where their money is going to go, essentially. Okay. I'm seeing a couple of you write, and I don't want to go on to the next section if you're still writing. <laughs> this is why it's good that I'm able to see you so I can get a good feedback. So there you go. All right. Um Let's go on to the next one, everybody. Again, please remember, if you have any questions, please put them in the chat. Super important. Super important. All right. I'll do my best. We'll do our best to answer them. All right. Let's move on. Next comes the financials. This is the meat and potatoes section of your business plan. All right. A reader of your business plan who has arrived at the financial section, all right, will be very interested in looking at the numbers. They'll want to see that your business can actually produce what it says it's going to produce, all right, when it comes to results. Business plan financial is the section of your business plan that outlines your past, current, and projected financial state, right? Don't hesitate to outline your past. Last five years, we've seen this. Your current fiscal year 2023, we've seen this, and your projected fiscal year 2024 to 2027, we're projecting this. Everybody got that? Okay, past, present, and future. This section includes all the hard data and the numbers that you'll need to plan your business's future and to make your case to potential investors, all right? This is all the numbers, all the graphs, all right? Very important, okay? In this section, you will put in the three documents. Balance sheets, number one. Profit and loss, also known as income statements, and the statement of cash flow. Now, we've offered uh, financial management uh, workshops where we've discussed this. And at the end of our time today, I'm going to uh, talk to you about another workshop we're offering uh, later in November or October, October, November. I can't remember. It's there. It's there. I'll, I'll have the date for you at the very end. It's on one slide um, where we are offering financial management again, this time as a one single session, sort of um, an abridged, more interactive version. So there you go, all right? This is where you'll need, so again, if you're unfamiliar with the financial documents, balance sheet, income statement, and statement of cash flow, if you're unfamiliar with these three, we do offer another workshop on those, so later on. You will need to include supporting financial documents. Any uh, funding request in this part of your um, uh, business plan, it can be included there or in the previous section. So again, any supporting financial documents that you have, all right, financials. I have an article that we're going to uh, read together uh, talking about the financial section of your business plan. So let's go ahead, let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to go ahead and share it with you, all right, the article right there. right over here from uschamber.com. I'm going to copy this and put this in the chat. I'm going to give everybody just a little bit. Um, yes, thank you, Jeff. Financial Essentials and Interactive Approach. It is the 30th of October. There you go. This is why we work as a team. There you go. And I'll have it at the last slide, at the very last slide. But here's the article that I'm talking about. I'm going to give everybody just a little bit of time to click on it. It's in the chat. It's in the chat. All right. And uh, there you go. It's there. All right. So business plan financials, three statements to include. All right. It is essential to securing investors and to determine whether or not your idea is even viable. Okay. Okay. And this is where I start by saying, you could start with the financials. You can start your business plan 
you're not going to put the financials at the beginning. That's for the executive summary. There's an order to, to these, but you can start working on the financials first. Get your numbers ready first. Put it all in a spreadsheet and we'll talk about how to do that first. Get the graphs ready, okay? And do that first. It'll help you determine whether or not your idea is even viable. I've had number of number of various um, business ideas over throughout my life, and I've always started with the numbers. I don't want to take my time and do the rest of the business plan if the numbers will immediately show me that I'm going to be in the red in my past, present, and future. Does that make sense to everybody? So consider working on your numbers first. All right, that's important. All right. Okay. So what are business financials? Financials section of your business that outlines your past. Um, uh, uh, it'll have all the hard data like we mentioned. And there you go. So sections to include in your business plan financials. Number one, let's talk. Your profit and loss statement, also known as income statement. It'll identify your business's revenue, profits, and expenses, loss. This document describes your company's overall financial health in a given time period in a year, fiscal year, for example, and so on. While the profit and loss statements are typically prepared quarterly, you will need to do so at least annually before filing your business tax returns with the IRS. And that is a different, uh, for, um, different discussion for a different workshop right there. But I would recommend that this be done at least annually, all right, especially if you're just starting, starting up, all right, very important. Here are some common items to include in your profit and loss statement. Your revenue, your expenditures, your revenue, your expenditures, any cost of goods sold, cost of marketing, making the products. That includes material and time. Go back to the watercolor production uh, that I was talking about. If you're painting, for example, not only do you have the cost of your canvas and your paints and your brushes, but you also have the cost of your time. Revenue minus the cost of goods sold is your COGS, cost of goods sold, is your uh, gross margin, all right? Maybe there are operational expenditures, cost of running your business, including paying your employees, rent, equipment, travel expenses, and so on, right? Maybe you've purchased a large a piece of machinery that will depreciate over time. You'll include this as well in depreciation, okay? All right. And how about the earnings before your taxes, all right? EBT, that is your revenue minus your cost of goods sold, minus your operating expense, minus your interest and loan payments and depreciation. You'll also include information about my revenue minus all of your expenses, also known as your profit. That'll be in your income statement, all right? So far, so good, all right? And that'll be in a, in a spreadsheet, essentially, right? And we'll talk about that, so that'll be good, all right? Let's move on to the balance sheet. The balance sheet provides a snapshot, a snapshot of your company's finances. It's a balance sheet. It's a snapshot, just one day, as of... As of September 21st, 2023, this is my situation. It allows you to keep track of your earnings and expenses. It includes what your business owns, your assets, versus what it owes, your liabilities, as well as what your business is currently worth, your equity, your equity. Assets will equal to liabilities plus the equity, all right, and so on. All right, very good, very important, all right? On the asset side, all right, you'll have three subsections. I want you to consider this, three subsections on the asset side. Current assets, those are assets that are used, being used within the last 12 months. Fixed assets, these are things that do not change, uh, assets that do not change, your machines, for example, your um, coffee making machine or something like that. Whether or not you make one cup of coffee a day or a thousand, you still have that one machine. And then other assets, so sort of variable assets as well, okay? On the liability side, you're going to include what the business owes. This can be broken down into current liabilities, 
amounts that need to be paid back within a year. Maybe you have some credit card debts or something like that. And then long-term liabilities. We're talking about long-term over a year. So name of the game, every time you see the word current, that means within a year, within a year, all right? Once you've calculated your assets and your liabilities, you can then determine your business's net worth, all right? Also known as the equity, okay? It can be calculated by subtracting what you owe from what you own. In other words, this is the famous one, assets minus liabilities. Assets minus liabilities. So this is the second example. Uh, I'm sorry, the, the second um, uh, financial document. Income statement, balance sheet, all right? And next is your statement of cash flow. Statement of cash flow shows the exact amount of money coming into your business, the inflow, and going out. A lot of the times businesses will fail. And I, I mentioned this in the financial management course, but businesses will fail because they fail to manage their cash flow, right? Okay. Each cost incurred or amount earned should be documented for its own line, right? And that's important. Categories include the famous three for statement of cash flow. Here we go. Operating. Oops. Sorry. I'm crossing it out instead of highlighting it. I apologize. Operating expenses, operating activities, I mean, I apologize. There you go. Investment activities and financing activities. Each of these activities will have money coming in and money going out. Okay. Operating activities involve any ongoing expenses from day-to-day -day activities. They're likely to be made up of the majority of your cash flow statement. So operating is the day-to-day. -day. Do you pay a fix, Pay yourself a fixed uh, per diem every day? A fixed uh, salary every day? Maybe you do. That would be included in your outgoing uh, operating activities for your statement of cash flow. Okay, very important. Investment activities. So again, that was the operating activity. Investment activities, on the other hand, cover any long-term payments that are needed to start and run your business. Have you invested in machinery? That is money invested outward, all right? Have you invested in another company that brings you money regularly every month? That would be investment activities coming in, okay? And finally, are you ready? Financing activities include money you've used to fund your business's venture, including transactions with creditors and or funders. So financing. Maybe you have a statement of cash flow for the year and, or for a month, let's say, for a month for the month of September. And that statement of cash flow will show money coming in from a funder and leaving to pay a creditor. Being able to know your cash flow statement, cash is a great, uh, your, um, is a great indicator of your company's health. You want to know. It's like your company going in for a physical, right? Okay, you, you see what I mean? Yeah. You wanna know, you wanna know how it's doing, all right? And so that's it. So far, so good. Everybody good? All right. Nice. Very good. So we're right track, right on time. This is perfect. We might even finish a little bit earlier, which is great. I'm with you for two hours today. We're done with our first hour. And feel free if you need to go get a cup of coffee, cup of water or something like that. It's fine. It's all good. I know this is long, right? But uh, feel free. I'm going to go ahead and go back to my PowerPoint presentation right over here. Um, it's all good. Uh, where was I? There you go. Financial section. There you go. Right there. Next up, number nine. Welcome to what may be possible, might be the thickest section that you have in the back. And that is the appendix. Common examples of things to include in your appendix. I would say, before we list them, number one, anything you refer to in the other section saying 
check out or look at the appendix, right? Credit histories, CVs, or even just the resumes, up to you. Maybe some product pictures, any letters of reference, licenses, permits, patents, any legal documents, any other contracts of any sort. So it'll all depend. It'll all depend on how you've structured the rest of your business plan. Again, there's no wrong way. But again, this is where you'll have all the full documents in the back. All right. Appendix. Are you including a summary of something in another section? This is where you would include the whole thing. Got it? Taking a sip of water here. Uh, all right. And so this is great. This is great. All right. Use your appendix to provide supporting documents or other materials well, they are, that were specifically requested. Maybe you're applying for funding and in the funding um, prospectus, there is a list of documents that you need to provide. Maybe I haven't mentioned them, right? Maybe you need to provide some environmental impact study or something like that. That would be in the appendix and referenced somewhere in the uh, rest of your business plan. Okay. All right. Now, I promised that we would dive in a little bit deeper into research and analysis. And this is the section where we're going to do this. So I put it as a separate section because we're going to dive in just a little bit deeper because it's so important. To, okay. It's all important. It really is. You don't want to miss a beat, right? But this section, right there. Maybe it's because I have a marketing background. And I'm like, oh, it's I, I have to talk more about this. It's all right. But let's see. Let's talk. There are three points that I'd like to make about just going in a little bit deeper into market research and analysis. You're going to use the market research to find your customers. All right. So you're going to ask a couple of questions about demand. Is there a desire for your product or service? Again, very, very important in that section. You have to be able to answer that, that question. Is there a de desire for your product and service? You can have the best coffee in the world. You can provide the best experience in a restaurant in the world. You can have the best clothing as an outfitter or a haberdasher. That is great. Your product or service can be the bee's knees. But if you do not have, if there isn't demand, then there's, it's not going to work. So this is where you determine this. Okay. They're determine that. Next market size. How many people would be interested in your offering? Are you marketing to the general population or not? Do you have maybe, maybe for your outfitter store, it's only people who enjoy the outdoors right? Keep a realistic understanding of what your market size is. Talk with your SBDC advisor to help you as well as you're determining this and you're building that business plan, right? Feel free to give us a call, right? We can team you up with an advisor to help you. This is what we do. This is who we are. Next, economic indicators. What is the e income range and employment rate in your community? in your community. O opening up a high-end restaurant or a high-end travel experience mm -hmm. in your community when the unemployment rate has suddenly skyrocketed, people might have other uh, worries and concerns and might not necessarily uh, be attracted by your business. So this is important. What are the economic indicators? And again, you can research this easily uh, by uh, going to a number of governmental websites, okay, and finding that out. We might have stats about Oregon or just, uh, you know, Eastern Oregon or Bend. And again, your SBDC advisor will be able to help you with that. Next, location. 
Where do your customers live and where can your business uh, and where can your business reach? Right. Perhaps you're not located where you would like to be. Are you not in the city center? Maybe all the other shops and commerce are in the on Main Street, but you're a couple blocks away. Can you actually reach your business, your uh, your prospective customers? OK. Or how about this? Consider this market saturation. Are you living in a small town in Eastern Oregon that has, I don't know, three or four coffee shops and you're interested in starting another one? Yes, again, you might have the best coffee in the world, but you might come face to face with an issue of market saturation. These are all situations and issues that you need to consider, okay? And lastly, pricing. What do potential customers pay for these alternatives? What do they pay for these alternatives, for the alternatives, okay? So for example, um, you might have a, a beer hall or a gastro pub that you're opening, but there's a wine bar next to it that's also been serving beer for the last 15 years, all right? What do they pay for the alternatives? So pricing, so consider demand, market size, economic indicators, location, market saturation, and pricing. In your section on market analysis, these might be subsections as you're writing down your business plan. So far, so good? Okay, you get the idea. Next, gather demographic information. This is what we're talking about here, okay? To better understand opportunities and limitations for gaining customers. You can get population data on age, wealth, family interests, and anything else that's relevant for your business. And again, your advisor could help you. Number two, listen and watch. Existing sources can save you a lot of time and energy, right? But again, the information might not be as specific to your audience as you'd like. We're talking about a trade-off of information here. Broader information, data about Oregon as a whole, Eastern Oregon maybe as a whole, that's going to be free and easily accessible. However, if you want specific surveys and information and market research of your hyper-focused community, that's going to take more time and money. You'll use it to answer, and this is important, you'll use it to answer the questions that are both general and quantifiable, like for industry trends, demographics, and, and household incomes. Asking customers yourself can give you a nuanced understanding of your target market, but it takes more time. That's that trade-off. You get much more targeted information, but it'll cost you in resources, time, and money. Broader information for free that you can get is more broad, but it's free. So you might want to combine both. Again, talk with your SBDC advisor. Direct research can be time-consuming and expensive. Use it to answer questions about your specific business and cu customers, like maybe reactions to your logo, improvements that you can make to the buying process, or where customers might go instead of your business. If you've developed a social relationship with your prospective customers, maybe you know them, right? They can give you some information. But again, it is it can be tricky because it's time-consuming, direct research. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Let's take a look. You can use existing sources again or do research yourself. And that's important. Oops. Now, I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to share another article right here uh, in just a second. Uh, this one gives you market research and competitive analysis tools, tools from our friends at the SBA. So I'd like you to uh, go ahead, I'll put this in the chat. Oops, I'll put this in the chat. I'd like you to go ahead and click on this everybody and save it. This is almost a non-negotiable, I'm gonna say non-negotiable, right? As a teacher, right? You gotta do it, <laughs> you gotta do it. Uh, and save it, save it or print it, okay? Or I would say save it, okay? It has a lot of information uh, that 
I, we've already discussed about this, uh, this section about market research, but are you ready? In the middle there, do you see it right there? Are free business, small business data and trends right there, right there for references. Okay. So demographics, the U.S. Census Bureau, right? Bureau of Labor and Statistics. Economic indicators, consumer price index. Employment statistics, right there. So I have gone ahead and bookmarked this, and I would strongly suggest you do the same so that you have this, so that you can look at it when you're drafting and writing your um, business plan. This is where you get the data, essentially. This is where you get the data. There's a lot to look into with this and try not to get bogged down in the weeds, so to speak, right? But there you go. Okay. There you go. It's all there. Okay. Isn't that fun? Is that cool? I think it's pretty cool. There's a lot of free resources there. All right. So you you all have this again. It's in the chat, everybody. And so as a resource for you, it's all there. All right, let's move on to our third section in, here we go. Let's move on to our third section, all right? Use competitive analysis, and this is important, this is key, to find a market advantage. Competitive analysis helps you learn from businesses competing for, uh, for your pers pr pr prospective customers, all right? This is key to defining a competitive edge that creates sustainable revenue. Right, your competitive analysis, again, your SWOT analysis, this is it, should identify your competition by product line or services or even market segments among kids. Where, who are my competitors? Among adults, who are my competitors? That's what we mean by market segment. Okay, I just divided it into two here. Among outdoor enthusiasts, who are my competitors, okay, and so on. Assess the following characteristics of the competitive landscape. So consider your competition's market share, right? You're trying to open a restaurant or a haberdasher. Are there competitors that have 100% of the market share, 50% of the market share? You might have to uh, determine that. Again, the strengths and weaknesses. Your window of opportunity to enter the market. Right? Is it seasonal? Is there seasonality? Right? You're not going to enter the market in an outdoor outfitter comp, um, uh, outdoor outfitter for summer clothes or swim swimwear. Okay, in November, right? You're going to go ahead and enter the market closer to March, April, May. Right? Very important. The importance of your target market to your competitors. Any other barriers that might hinder you as you enter the market? What are barriers? Well, there's a lot of them. Financial barriers, legal barriers, governance barriers, compliance barriers, right? Oh, no. I need this new permit that I did not know about before I enter the market. This is where you would mention about that permit, okay? And again, and we talked about this a little bit already. But are there any indirect or secondary competitors that may impact your success? Indirect or secondary? Indirect or secondary? Are there alternatives, right? Are there alternatives, okay? Any questions, make sure to put them in the chat as always, and we'll go ahead and uh, respond and reply, all right? One way, I'm going to go ahead and show the whiteboard here. This is the teacher in me again. But one way that you can uh, go ahead and do this is by um, doing a, a little target like this uh, as a little schematic, all right, whereby you would have here the general population general population, for example. And again, it all depends on your business, okay? Let's say I'm selling toys, for example, that are classic, classic toys, right? General population. Here, I'm gonna focus on uh, 
families. Okay, maybe families with kids. Okay, so general population is out here. Smaller group are families with kids. All right, everybody see that idea? That's why you're, you can do that little schematic, that little target here, okay? Um, toys are generally done with, so I'm gonna, families with, let's say, school-aged kids. All right, that'll be the next one, school-aged kids. Right, maybe not uh, teenagers. Maybe they don't play with toys anymore, but there you go. And then families with teenage kids. And then maybe we're looking at higher income because you sell classic toys that are handmade and the price point is higher or something like that. I hope everybody can see. I, I don't usually use the whiteboard, but um, I think it helps a lot general population uh again families with kids that'll be this next section right here uh families with school age kids again we're focusing a little bit more we're targeting a little bit more and then higher incomes right or something like that as an example all right so far so good i hope that helped i hope i hope that didn't confuse or anything like that but that's the idea when you do um uh you know target uh, uh, market uh, targeting and target segmentation, right? You want to make sure that you do that. So consider another example, right? Everybody needs to drink some liquids, okay? A little closer, adult beverages, okay? A little closer, beer, a little closer, craft beer. At each of these levels, you'll have a competitor. You might have the wine bar, at the outer rim, at the outer ring, right? For adult beverages, okay? But you'll have the local beer gastropub as a competitor a little bit closer. So the closer your competitors are to the center, right? The more direct your competitors will be. The wider it is, right? The more indirect, the wider they are placed in that target, the more indirect your competitors will be. So again, you can use that target uh, little schematic uh, to talk about target segmentation, market segmentation, or um, competitors. Okay, so there you go. That was our little marketing lesson for the day. <laughs> there you go. All right, that's awesome. Let's move on, everybody. Okay. And now we're going to see a number of business plan examples. Okay, I'm looking at the time. I want to finish a little bit early because two hours is a lot, but um, and we're we're right on time. So we're now going to look at business plan examples. All right, these business plan examples are on bplans.com, and I'm going to go ahead and do that by sharing this page with you. All right, bplans.com. Now I want to remind you that bplans.com is a website that is uh, made by live plan today's specific goal is to talk about mark uh, business planning without life plan so we're talking about it without life plan but here's the link everybody go ahead i'm going to give you uh, just a second to click on it it's in the chat please save that um uh, document right there okay you can bookmark it. It's all there. And these are 550 plus free business plan examples. And we're going to take a look at a, at a few of them today, okay? To really see what a business plan looks like, have the financials, um, market research, and so on. It's going to be great, okay? All right. Let's go. Let's see. Um, so uh, when you scroll down here, you have numerous, numerous examples of different industries, trending industries. Uh, I am going to pick fine arts since we've been talking about watercolors. And I know a number of a couple of you, I think, are uh, in the art production field. So there you go. Let's take a look at fine arts and craft business plans. So there you go. I can take a look at this. I have art supply business plans. I have craft business plans, home decor. But what I'm interested in is uh, fine arts right over here, okay? 
Let's go down here, custom jewelry. You can pick any one and it'll give you a sample. Please feel free as I'm talking and doing this for this section, if your, um, your eye, if something else catches your eye uh, and you wanna click on another one like photography or something like that, there you go, feel free. Let's take a look at art school gallery business plan right over here. Okay, so there you go. What do we start with? Obviously, what do we start with everybody? The executive summary. <laughs> and there we go. Remember, it's written at the very end and it has a short little paragraph right over here. Artsphere Gallery School of Art. Artsphere began its operations in September of this year after expanding from its former back room uh, into a full 787 square foot facility on the corner of Maine and First in Birmingham, Alabama. Since September, the business has grown sustainably. Mm -hmm. That's good, but in an unordered way. Oh, okay. This, is, this business plan is being written to set a rational framework for growth and maximize profit potential. Successful realization of this plan will produce increasing profits annually by the end of the third year. That's their plan. Very good. What do they have here? Keys to success and critical factors. Now, again, how would they know what these keys to success are? They wrote the executive summary at the end. That's how you know. Okay, penetration into daytime um, market for art lessons, great. Completing some alterations on premises, uh, to, pr to premises, very good. Okay, um, making changes to certain operational and pricing practices, okay. Making uh, sales of art supplies an additional profit source. All right, very nice, very good. All right, let's take a look, everybody. Here we have a chart chart that outlines year one, year two, year three sales projections. Again, how did they get this? How did they figure this out? They worked on the financials first. They took this graph that they made on um, Excel, let's say, and they copied it and pasted it in the executive summary, right? Very good. Gross margins, here are the margins. And then the net profit is expected to rise and grow within three years. So if I'm a prospective funder, I'm looking at this and I'm going, this is the type of business that I'm interested in, all right? This is, the, this is good, this is healthy, right? Very good. Executive summary also has a subsection, objectives. Not gonna read the whole thing. The greatest opportunity for art spheres through teaching art to paying customers, right? The capacity to do this is limited in size to approximately eight people at one time and so on and so forth. That's the objective. Next up, as the mission, as, as the afternoon market sector, 22% is nearly fully booked, a secondary objective will be to fill the evening hours, 7.30 to 9.30. These eight hours are easier to fill and so on. Very good. Number one dot two is the mission. Again, mission statements can be Long, they can be short, it all depends, okay? But this is their mission. They're dedicated to providing competent professional instruction in art in friendly and pleasant surroundings while catering to the varying needs of different target market groups. It tries to cultivate a more personal, longer-term relationship with customers that can be achieved by a typical six-section generic art uh, session taught at Bessemer State College, okay? Uh, the... Uh, Art sphere, and again, I'm not going to read the whole thing, recognizes that the real product it sells is different from the art instruction given. Helena Rubenstein is quoted as saying, in the factory, we uh, manufacture cosmetics, but the product we sell is called hope, right? That sort of thing. So uh, that is a much longer mission statement, but again, it can work. They added another section called keys to success, all right, which again, you can consider doing. Every business plan is different. Every business plan is different. Okay, very good. Okay. The most important element to the success is how skillfully the owners can tailor the products to suit the varying needs, emotional, psychological, technical of its customers, and so on. Keys to success. Did you notice that this is a mini business plan, so to speak? All right. It has the summary. That's what it's called an executive summary. It summarizes the business plan. It's all there. I should get a good feel, right, about what your business plan is going to be by just reading the executive summary. 
What you do not want to do, warning, what you do not want to do is have a business plan that reads differently than your executive summary, right? Wait a minute. The executive summary said this. This other section in the business plan says something else. Again, write it at the end. Second section, company summary. Again, you can call it company description. It's totally up to you. It has information. We're going to go more, more quickly here. I'm looking at the time. All the other things we need to do are looking at the time, but um, uh, information about where it's located, the number of students, the amount of money, and so on. Market penetration uh, right there, uh, and so on. Very good. Uh, other artists, and so on. Company ownership. Registered DBA jointly under the names of Paul and Hannah Nash. Okay. There's information about who Paul Nash is, all right, and about who Hannah Nash is right over here. Here's a startup summary because it's a startup. Our plan expenses for a first full year are shown as follows. So they have expenses, assets, and investments. They have no loans. Again, this is if it's a startup type of uh, business funding. Here's the table that they have here. They've included all of this, a summary of the assets, the summary of the liabilities, and so on. Startup requirements. Remember, we talked about this, including the startup requirements. They put it in their second section. That's okay. Every uh, business plan will be different. Okay. Startup requirements. They're down to the penny. They show you down to the down to the dollar right there. Total requirements and so on. Business location and facilities. There you go. Right over here and so on. Next comes products and services. They have a list. Oops. Life Plan is trying to advertise <laughs> their services uh, as we're on their site, but that's okay. Um, again, there's a list. They can put a bigger list here. They have more, it's more, more skinny information here, but it's pretty thin, but, um, there you go. Next comes the market analysis summary right there. <clears throat> they have great information. I'm going to take a sip of water here. They have great information right over here for one on market segmentation. They've segmented everything from school aged to retired, non-working to working evening classes and so on and so forth. So again, I'm on this. You could be looking at other ones. They have a, a pie chart. So that is actually, you need to make a decision, right? What is the best visual representation of the data that I've got in this case for market segmentation? They chose wisely. They chose a pie chart. Very good. Market analysis again <clears throat> and so on. Target market um, segment strategy. What is the strategy that they use? They went even deeper into market needs right here. Service business analysis. Okay, art instruction is offered in different ways. Artists who teach classes, private tutors, arts association and galleries, schools and colleges, and so on. And then they went directly into their main competitor here. Okay, the Art School of Birmingham is one of their main competitors. Birmingham Artworks. <clears throat> Birmingham Arts Association and Bessemer State College, again with a um, uh, a description of each. <coughs> All right. Next, they went into something called strategy and implementation. That's another one. Again, it'll look a little bit different, but that's something that they went ahead and did: a strategy and implementation. This is where they talk about their competitive edge, right over here. Okay, competitive edge, many facets of uh, art, art sphere, which will make it a top-notch competitor in the art classes are outlined below. This is the competitive advantage right over here, high-profile location, that sort of thing. Marketing strategy, again, they talk about the capacity and so on. Sales strategy, a description, right, um, of the sales strategy. There's no sales force outside of this owner's who will close the deals with interested customers by creating actions of marketing strategy and so on and so forth. Phone inquiries. Again, people will want to know. Prospective funders will want to know. They'll want to know how the sale is actually going to be made. So this is the session where they put it. The titles can be different, but you get, you get the idea. You get the idea. Let's move on, everybody. I know it's been an hour and a half so far. Thank you for sticking it out with me. Thank you for sticking it out. This has been great. Uh, um, we have a bit more to look at here. Sales forecast right here. 
okay? And again, perfect use of the visual data right over here, month one, month two, month three, how they expect to uh, gain, earn an income essential or earn, make a profit, right? Sales by year, one, two, three. Again, uh, you can get this information from the financial documents, from the financial documents using, um, yeah, using uh, all the data that you plug in your spreadsheets. Absolutely. All right, here we go. Sales forecasts, direct cost of sales, and so on. This is where they talk about their milestone in the, in the fifth section. All right. Um, and again, uh, this is the sample dates right over here. So new flooring, storage uh, racks, ads. This can help you and your company stay on track. Stay on track. Very important. All right. What are the milestones that you're looking to do? Finalize the spring offensive uh, and so on. What the budget is for this open house plans and so on. Who's in charge? Paul Nash and Heather Nash right over here and how much it'll cost. Uh, then they have their management summary right here. Again, um, the personnel plan, how much everybody will get paid. All right. Right over here in their first year, second year, third year, the personnel plan. Then they include their financial plan, okay? Uh, they have uh, something called a break-even analysis, which is also something that you can do. I did not mention this. I only mentioned the first three, um, uh, the three financial documents for the financial plan, but we have it here. The break-even analysis, it shows you exactly where you need to be, how much you need to sell the services and goods in order to break even, okay? You can get all that information and that data from your numbers, from your numbers, do not let the financial um, section scare you, right? We have workshops in financial management and even just as important, your advisor can help. Your advisor can help. If it's just another set of eyes, looking at the numbers, making sure that you didn't make a mistake or something like that, right? Your advisor can help. And that's key. That's key. All right. Great, projected profit and loss, all right? This pretty healthy, pretty healthy. We're talking about 5,000, all right? We're not in the red at all, all right? Maybe in the fifth month here. Does everybody see, I, I hope everybody sees this. Is everybody seeing the seasonality here? Seasonality, how it changes according to the different seasons. Is everybody seeing this? This is important. All right, you might have graduation season over here. You might have gifts and then in, in June, it might or in May, it might go down, and then it might go back up like this. Everybody see that? Okay, I want to make sure that everybody notices that because there is seasonality in everything that we do. It's not all going to be flat. You're not always going to earn a profit of five thousand dollars every month. All right, uh, there's seasonality. Right? Another business venture that I've done myself as a teacher is that I've sold my school. Um, curriculum, my, um, my the curriculum that I've built for my uh, for my private education, I've sold that to other teachers, and I get to look at the data, and I see seasonality, right? Teachers are not interested in spending money on curriculum during the summer, so that my profit goes down during the summer, and of course, what's my biggest month? The month of September, where teachers are like, I need curriculum. And where do they go? They go buy it from me. And so suddenly it spikes in September. What do we have here? We have seasonality that is pretty interesting. It spikes in December, right? We're talking about, um, what are we talking about? We're talking about gifts, Christmas gifts, right? End of the year gifts, right? I'm gonna give you an, a, a ticket to take an art class or something like that. Boom, more people do that as well at the end of the year, right? At least that's what the numbers show show us okay so i hope everybody noticed the seasonality right that's a, that's important yearly profits all right year one year two year three we saw that in the executive summary but it's there gross margins monthly right there so the gross margins you get that from your data determining that from your data that's important gross margins yearly great and then here is their profit and loss right here sales expenses Total operating expenses, projected cash flow, right? And this is the cash flow section right there for the third one. So remember the three main documents that you need to produce, financial documents, balance sheet, income statement or profit and loss, and statement of cash flow. We talked about this earlier when we looked at the different sections. All right, here we go. Projected balance sheet. I'm not going to go too deep into this. 
uh, in uh, our financial management class, we talk about business ratios. Ratios, if you remember, uh, this is where you determine the business ratios by combining the numbers and those are indicators that show positive and negative trends, general trends for your health of your business, and so on, so to speak, right here. Great. And last but not least is the appendix, right here. <clears throat> right here, the appendix. Okay. Uh, Don has a question. When you plan your yearly information, do you use the calendar year or the fiscal year? I would use the fiscal year um, for tax purposes um, and so on. Uh, that would be uh, the one that I would use. You can use the calendar year. But again, I have my preference. It's your choice. It really is. But again, that's what I would do. Um, you get to. And again, um, yeah, there you go. Uh, so. Let's keep going. Here's the appendix. Nice. It has uh, a sales forecasts, direct costs, personnel plans, general assumptions, right? Pro forma, um, profit and loss. Uh, it's all there. It's all there. All that information. It's all in the appendix. A lot of numbers. You can take a look at it and scroll through it. I don't want you to get um, scared and overwhelmed by all of this. But again, you could put a summary of the of the balance sheet, for example, in your financial uh, information section, and then put your um, uh, whole balance sheet in the appendix, right? So that's how you can do it. That's how you can do it, all right? Okay. And there you go. That's it with this plan. That's it with this plan, all right? So we took a look at one plan. Please feel free, and this is my teacher assigning homework, so to speak, for this. Listen up, listen carefully. Please uh, go ahead and look at another one. Look at another plan, all right? Something else, pick one right here, all right? In sample business plans, pick one. Something that relates to your industry. That's important. So go ahead and take just a couple minutes right now and pick one. Let's do it, all right? Read it over. See all the sections. Okay. We'll just take, I'll just give you, I'll just be quiet for a couple minutes. Drink some water here. Okay. Carl. At least go ahead and read the executive summary of what you're doing, which is great. Go ahead and click on the reaction button with a thumbs up once you're done with the executive summary so that I, so that I know when to keep going.
We got three thumbs up. That's great. Four thumbs up. Five thumbs up. You can do that in the reaction. Six thumbs up. Great, 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 great. Awesome. <laughs> this is awesome. Very good. So I hope you read an executive summary section that uh, fits with your industry, right? Something that is related to what you're interested in doing and really gives you that inspiration to go ahead and, and do that. Okay. Very good. Very good. So that's great. That's awesome. Now let's take a look at a couple of more tools, tools to draft your business plan. Now, obviously, you can use a program like Life Plan. It'll cost money. You can use other programs online that are more free. But the best way to go ahead and, and do this, in my, re in my humble recommendation, is to go ahead and use a standard word processing. Word processing right here. I am going to go ahead and share with you a business plan template on Google Docs. Is everybody ready? Okay. It's going to be in the... It's going to be in the um, uh, in the chat. All right. Let me go ahead and share it with you. All right. And I'd like for you, uh, please, uh, to go ahead and um, click on this link. Click on this link. I'll give you just a minute. All right. Because there's another step. Because this one is you're unable to edit it. We need to make a uh, we need to make a um, a copy of it. So I'm seeing a number of you click. Good job, good job, great job. Keep going, keep going. I should have 11 of you. I have four of you that I've clicked. Five. All right, go ahead, everybody. Four, five. All right, you can you can click on it anytime. It's there. It's This is a template, a full-on template. Now, you're probably asking, wait a minute. Some of the numbers on this template are a little bit different and the categories are a little bit different. Remind, remember, there's not one way to make a business plan. This is a very detailed 45 page business plan. And I'm gonna ask everybody who's on it to go ahead and go to file, go to file, and then click on make a copy, make a copy. Everybody ready? Make a copy. Now, if you're unable to access this in one way or another, all right, got it. You got it. I got a thumbs up here. Great job. If you're unable to access this in one way or another, you can find it online by just typing business plan template, Google Docs. Make a copy and give it a, give it a name. Give it a name. Make a copy and then give it a name. Give it a name. Uh oh, that's all right. Julia's on. Julia's on an iPad. All right, I see that Julia. Not my desktop, so I can't can't access Word. Uh, this one's Google Google uh, Docs, but it's very similar to Word. All right, I'll just follow along. It's all right. When you are on your desktop, please feel free to Google Business Plan Template Google Doc, and you'll get the same one. So if you got it, Julia. Give me a thumbs up. I just don't want to leave anybody behind. Thank you, Julia. <laughs> All right. Great job. Great job. Okay. So far, so good. And so this will have the entire thing. <laughs> Everything from company description to products and services to marketing plan, including the SWOT analysis, operational plan, management and organization, startup expenses. They put their finances in the appendix and so on and so forth. So it's all there as a Google Doc. Let's talk about finances. How do I get all those numbers in the tables? I'm going to go ahead and use my next one. Everybody look at my screen. So far, so good. The spreadsheet. I can use Google Sheets right over here to make the numbers. And again, we'll talk, we can talk a little bit about this more next week when we do computer essentials, if, if you're coming next week for computer essentials, all right? And I'll go way more into depth about this, but again, this is where you can do your balance sheet. 
balance sheet, all right? And have it all ready to go, okay? Right over here. Get all the numbers and sum them up. Write all the formulas. Make tables. Tables. Make tables. Like this. Get all the numbers in. Right. From an aesthetic point of view, I would recommend that the tables look the same if you make them really bold or anything like that. Remember, this is just numbers, data, okay? Data. You don't want to be too wacky with it. <laughs> you know, this is numbers. This is the this is the hardcore data, the boring stuff, right? <laughs> Although I don't find it boring, but this is um, yeah. Okay. So far, so good. All right. Great, great, great. Okay. Next, let's talk about another tool. If you need to make a pitch, that's right, a pitch to a local lender. They're sifting through. They like what they see. They want you to make a pitch. Consider using Google Slides as a slide presentation or PowerPoint. And again, we'll talk about this in greater detail next week for Computer Essentials right there. It's all there. Google Slides. I would recommend putting, uh, you know, really getting your slides, um, having a layout, having changing the background, having your logo on the first slide, having your names, and then making more slides by clicking this new slide button, having one slide per section. Maybe you have eight slides. Keep it pithy. They want to see the numbers. They want to see your graphs. Keep it pithy on the slide presentation when you're making a pitch, okay? Do this at the very end, obviously, after you've done your business plan. You're not going to know what to put in here until you've done your business plan, all right? You got it, everybody? So far, so good, all right? So again, PowerPoint, Google Slides, Google Sheets, or Excel, if you're more comfortable with Excel, and then um, Google Docs or Word. Okay, very, very important. All right. So far, so good? All right. Okay, last but not least, I wanted to introduce, introduce, a lot of you I'm sure already know this tool, but I'd like to introduce uh, the use of this tool in the business planning process today. And that is, and you have to be careful with this, it is a tool to help you find more examples and to give you more inspiration. And that is, of course, artificial intelligence, AI, AI. I'm going to go to chat GPT and I'm going to go right here and type in, write an executive summary for a coffee shop. Now, I want to warn you, like I would warn any of my students in my whole career, this isn't a way for people to, uh, this isn't a way for people to cheat, you understand? This isn't a way for people to cheat. This is a way to get more examples, examples, all right? Are you missing out on something? Is there a, a section that you feel can be um, better added? Well, then go ahead and uh, type it and write it. So this is an example of a coffee shop executive summary. All right. Again, there are still questions about how to use artificial intelligence, but I'm going to state it right here, right now. In the business planning opportunities uh, and business planning, use AI, ChatGPT. That is chat.openai.com. I'm going to go ahead and put that in the chat right over here, chat.openai.com. Again, and I want to state again, my disclaimer, <laughs> my disclaimer, this isn't a shortcut. This isn't a shortcut. This is an opportunity for you to get more examples, okay? Um, and you can ask questions that are very specific, very specific, okay? So for example, write a marketing plan, marketing plan or marketing section of a business plan for a mobile book van business in Eastern Oregon. 
and it will go ahead and do that for you specifically. Again, big disclaimer, okay? Not responsible for misuse. <laughs> All right, so use it as a tool. Use it as the tool that it is. Use it as a tool that it is. All right, let's finish up our PowerPoint presentation, okay? Okay. Sample business plan we've already done. Let's talk about what's coming up. That's right. There's more Provo coming up. Yes. <laughs> um, we have Computer Essentials for Entrepreneurs next week, 9 o'clock, September 29th. Next week, I will be going ahead and hosting and talking about Word, Excel, PowerPoint. We're going to go deeper into ChatGPT. We're going to go into Gmail. We're going to go into this. This is computer basics, computer basics. If you feel you have a good grasp on this, then it may not be the workshop for you. I look forward to seeing you, though, if you feel that this would be a great tool for you to use. October 30th, which is a Monday. I'm switching over to Mondays uh, for the last three. At 10 a.m. this time, Financial Essentials, single session, everybody. Single session where it's going to be a more interactive approach. I'm going to have you make your own um, uh, balance sheet, income statement, statements of cash flow. All right. I'll have you make your own. Okay. Very good. Then comes the general November 6th, balance sheet 101. All right. That will be a short one, okay, an hour, okay? The other one is an hour and 15 minutes, the Financial Essentials is a single session. And then on November 13th, also a Monday, end of the year tax preparation, 10 a.m. So it's all there. Look for the emails uh, that we sent out. It's all there. Once again, my name is Dr. Arnaud Prévost, and I am I have been overjoyed to be with you in the last two, uh, almost two hours now which has been great, feel free to give us a call. Feel free to give us a call. Talk with one of our advisors. I'm, I, see, I see a couple of you still writing <laughs> the information here. It's all going to be there on the email. Don't you worry. It's all going to be there. I'm waiting to go to the last slide. So it's all there. End of the year tax prep, getting it all ready to go. A big thank you to all 11 of you who were here. Uh, listening, participating, and all of that. Thank you so much. Uh, we're here for questions, but before the questions, give us a call, 541-278-5833, 541-278-5833, or sbdc at bluecc.edu. This is who we are all around Eastern Oregon. All right, now I'm opening it up for any questions. You can unmute anything. Christy's here. We've got Jeff. <laughs> anybody, anybody? And if not, we, I can dismiss you. Absolutely. <laughs> but we are here for questions. Business planning. <laughs> Dustin says, thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you, all of you. All of you. Joe says, thank you for the class. Thank you, all of you. It was great. It was filled <laughs> with excitement. <laughs> it was great. Any questions, feel free. And if not, you can go. Absolutely. Good morning. Um, I'm, I'm not going to type because I'm, you know, it took me forever to type this in. That's okay. <laughs> okay. Do you do, um, you do grant writing? You've done that. Are do you do any classes on grant writing and ways to look for funding? I do not. Um, my uh, example that I ha had done uh, that I gave, I hope it wasn't too confusing as I was talking about business plans and grant writing or whatnot was uh, for the nonprofit sector. Uh, so I don't, uh, we do, I do not offer it, but it may, it's possible. Uh, Christy, go ahead. Um, yeah, Julia. So uh, SBDC is funded with taxpayer dollars, and so we are not allowed to work with nonprofits. Um, and if you are a for-profit, there are unfortunately very few grant opportunities. Um, there are sometimes some that are very specific to a field or specific to an area. So uh, meeting with an SBDC advisor would help um, 
answer that question more specifically for your particular industry, but but generally speaking, there's not a lot of grants for for profits because it's um there there it's it's a risky um you know there's no guarantee that that money will be um used the way that it was intended and mm -hmm. um and grants generally support nonprofit activities. That makes sense. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Christy. It's sad news that we have to tell just about every new client that we have. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> that, did that answer your question, Julia? It did. Thank you. Thank you so much. We have a question in the chat from Kimberly. I'm curious if there are classes on more advanced Excel or chat GPT. As of right now, um, I, 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 we do not. Uh, ne next week is going to be more, more basic, and I'm going to talk um, about Excel like I said, computer essentials. It is the essentials to get you get you started. Really, it'll be more broad than deep. Um, there are numerous uh, tutorials on YouTube uh, for more advanced uh, Excel functions and things like that, and Chat GPT, different prompts that you can use and whatnot. But uh, I do not offer them. But those are good ideas for future ones. They are. We. They are. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kimberly. Any other questions? We're here until 11. Thank you so much. See you next time, says Don. Thank you, Don. Thank you so much. We have a, a number of friends here. Any questions? We are here. Rocio says, uh, it was a fantastic Zoom class. I will be in touch with questions. I'm going to start my ballroom rental business plan very soon. Thank you so much. It was fantastic to have you, Rocio. Thank you so much. Thank you. It was fantastic to have you. I agree. This was a fantastic class. And I have um, a lot of uh, a lot of questions, too. But I got to wrap my brain around it. Oh, so of thank course. You. This was of great. Course. Thank you. Thank you. I, I love the feedback. Thank you. You have no idea. <laughs> I do my best. I do my best. <laughs> we're, but we're a team. You know, we're a team. Jeff, Christy, myself, and the whole team at the SBDC, we work together. So uh, best of luck, Rocio, with your uh, ballroom rental business and writing the plan. Absolutely. Absolutely. Best of luck. Feel free to go, anybody, if you don't have any more questions, and uh, hopefully I'll see you in another session. Good job, Arno. Oh, yeah. Not a, thank you for your answers. Have a great day, my friend. You go, you go. Absolutely. All right. Any other questions? Oh, thank you. You will. Uh, you are dynamic. Bye. Bye, Julia. Thank you. Um, Anad, yes. Christy, I think Christy stepped away, but she's here in the same county as me. And I was just curious if there was a way to connect with her directly. Or... Um, there is. Uh, the only information I have was that is the phone number and the email. Um, I uh, We have to go through the main line, and then you will be immediately connected through to Christy. Uh, you can even, if I'm not mistaken, request Christy. Okay. And what? And so, what was that phone number or email? Uh, let's uh, show it again. Absolutely. Uh, here we go. Five four one two seven eight five eight three three, and the email is sbdc at bluecc.edu. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Right. I see Rocio still writing. That's great. <laughs> I got it now. Thank you so much. I, I was um writing the the email. The email. I, I have it now. You have yeah. it now. Yeah. Great. Great. Do you have any more questions yeah. in the last few minutes? Oh, I have a lot. I this uh, I have this idea. I not even 
knew about the name of the business, but right now that I was looking into the um, the link that you shared with us, yes, and it says gathering and ballroom rental business plan. And when yes. I was reading, I, and I, when I was reading it, it's like, yeah, this is the concept of my idea, right? So it's very very helpful. So I'm going to get into start reading and have Great. more ideas how to put it in a business plan because I have all the ideas here in my head. Oh, yes, of course. And, of course. and you but know, to, I just put it down. <laughs> to take the ideas and bring it to paper, talk with our, one of our advisors. They can help. They can absolutely mm -hmm. help. So g give us a call or send an email and we can get started. Absolutely. I started that yesterday and, and, it, and it was funny because I work for the migrant education program and our office is in front of the Blue Mountain Community College here in Hermiston. Okay. And But I was, yeah, I was searching in a big picture and I was searching and I get into the small business administration and then I send an email. She sent me some links and then I, I was in another webpage i forgot the name and she said yeah we can help you help you with your business plan but you need to attend to a class in person but it's not here it's, it's close to portland and i'm oh, like no. no that is not easy for me yes. so then, then i went to the small business administration they sent me a link and then i i was reading it all the links and then i i saw the blue mountain community college and i'm like what and and it was funny because I was looking outside and I have it in front of me, but I didn't yes, know. Yes, I didn't know yeah. that it was super, Absolutely. super good. Absolutely. And then I sent yesterday. <laughs> yeah, I sent yesterday an email, and then they sent me a link for these classes. And this one, I I asked for a personal leave in my work to attend this this Zoom meeting. Right. And um, yeah, it's it's amazing how it's opened my my great, head and my great. ideas. Well, make yeah, sure I'm to going talk, to start doing. Make sure to talk with an advisor. Very important. Yeah, I will, I will need that as soon as I start processing the ideas with Absolutely. this uh, format. Great. Then I'm going there to start wor working. But yes, I'm going to be there because I I want to do the business plan for this business Great. because Great. yeah, I'm very interested in making All right. it work. It's time for me to go. Thank you Thank so much you for very everything. much, Rocio. Bye. Bye.